Good morning, Kilmer community. Today is Thursday, March 4th, 2021. Today, we get to welcome our cohort B students to the building for the first time in almost a year and some new faces who've never been in the building. So I can't wait to see all of you this morning. As a reminder, our core values are respect, responsibility, and empathy. I'm so glad that Kaya was able to share the definitions of these three core values of, from her classmates. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you also for sharing Rosie the Riveter um, in honor of Women's History Month. On Friday, this will be our spirit day. So you are welcome to wear red, like a red handkerchief, rank um, bandana or handkerchief around your head um, or red clothing to honor Rose, Rosie and Women's History Month. I do want to share a couple of women who are important to American history. So this is Lucretia Mott. She was born in Massachusetts, grew up in Nantucket in 1793. This is Elizabeth Stanton, who was born in New York in 1850. So just a little bit about each of them. Lucretia was actually raised in the Quaker religion. And in that religion, it was really re unique at that time because it was one of the Americans' religions that encouraged the equality of women. She was able to speak at Quaker meetings and she was able to develop her confidence and become more eloquent in speaking, which was rare at that time for a woman to speak in public. She advocated um, for the end of slavery and she felt slavery was very sinful and that it had to be abolished or gotten rid of. I'm gonna switch over to Elizabeth for a moment. She actually was born in 1850 in New York. She advocated for many important issues as well um, including women's rights, and she also dedic was dedicated to abolishing slavery. Uh, and uh, she enjoyed something interesting about her. She enjoyed a more formal education where she excelled and worked hard to, and excelled in Greek, Latin, and mathematics. I thought that was pretty cool and was able to get some of the finest education that was afforded to women at that time. And this helped to foster her strong anti-slavery um, sentiments or feelings. Coincidentally, both of these women, as I mentioned before, they um, advocated for the abolish, um, for abolishing slavery. So they were called abolitionists. They met in 1840 at the world's anti-slavery convention in London. Now, Lucretia, I mean, Lucretia she was a delegate or a representative at this convention. Elizabeth, she went with her husband who was a delegate at this place. This is, and it was actually her honeymoon. So she had gotten married to her husband and then for their honeymoon, they went to London to go to this convention. While at the convention, they realized, well, Elizabeth basically stated, but both of them realized like how could women fight for others, meaning like abolishing slavery, unless they enjoyed rights of their own. So Lucretia supported Stanton in planning the first women's rights convention that was held in Seneca um, Falls, New York. They are credited for birthing the women's rights movement. So these from these two came it came more to follow um, with women's rights. We're going to look at some other um, women in American history. Um, and if you have someone from your culture who um, is notable and that you want me to highlight during this month, please um, send me an email or ask your teacher to send me an email or ask your parent to send or a guardian to send me an email and I would be happy to feature them. Okay, so on that note, I do have a few jokes. I have a joke that came to me from um, Nathan, who is in Miss Lundy's fourth grade class. I'm going to share that with you. So are you ready for this? What do you give a sick lemon? What do you give 
a sick lemon. Lemonade! <laughs> Did you get it? Lemonade. You drink lemonade and lemon aid. Aid is help. So, okay. All right. Well, hopefully you got that. Um, Nathan, thank you so much for sending that to me. And then I found a couple of jokes that I thought were kind of funny too. So I wanted to share them. The first one is, can February March? Can February March? No. But April, May. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, here's my last joke for you. If you have 13 apples in one hand and 10 oranges in the other hand, what do you have? So 13 apples in one hand, 10 oranges in another hand. What do you have? Big hands. <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be pretty big hands to be able to hold all that. I, I don't really think I could fit that. All right, all right, enough here or there, here or there. Anyway, as a reminder, we love you. We just absolutely adore you, our students. We are so glad that we finally have you in our buildings. And before long, we will be welcoming our fourth through eighth graders um, at our upper campus. So until then, always be your best you and make today and every day a great day. I will see you next time. Bye.